What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here and welcome back to another episode of JTAG and RGH Tutorials, episode 3. In this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to install a custom dashboard which is called Aurora, Aurora 0.6b, which is the latest version. The latest version will be linked in the description. So this dashboard is very, it's kind of important to have a custom dashboard I think. I mean you can get by without one, um, especially if you're using your console online. Um, then you don't really need a custom dashboard but to begin with I recommend installing it we're going to be setting everything up uh, for offline first and then I'm going to show you guys how to bring the console online afterwards because um, it does cost money to get the console online but to play offline and to you know download games and DLC and play that offline and even use link which is a service that allows you to basically play online but not through e Xbox Live um, that stuff is all free so I'm going to show you guys how to do all of that first and then we'll we'll cover the online stuff after so Aurora is pretty cool because it's a custom that dashboard designed for JTAGs and RGHs with a bunch of cool different settings so I'm going to go, go ahead and show you guys how to install this and then once we get it up and running I'll show you how to customize it so what you want to go ahead and do is make sure again you have a USB stick that's formatted in FAT32 format I've gone over this in the other videos so make sure it's FAT32. Go in, go into uh, the USB stick and download Aurora 0.6b, which will be linked in the video description. Open it up in WinRAR or 7-zip and highlight all of the files in here. Now, what you want to do is actually create a new folder on your USB stick called um, Aurora and open that folder and then just drag and drop all of these files into that folder. And just wait for that to copy over. Done. Okay. Okay, so now that you have Aurora basically copied to your USB, you want to unplug your USB stick from your Xbox 3, uh, from your computer and plug it into the Xbox 360. And then on the Xbox 360, we're going to head into uh, XTX menu. Again, episode 1 shows you how to install XX menu. Episode 2 shows you how to install Dash Launch. It's important you also have Dash Launch installed right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to press Y on Aurora. So you should automatically, when you press right bumper, it will take you to uh, the USB 0. If not, press X and select USB 0. And you'll have your Aurora folder. And you want to just press Y, press A to copy it. Press X, head to HDD1 which is your hard drive, head to that homebrew folder that we made uh, which has dash launch in it and then press Y and press A to paste and that will copy Aurora into that homebrew uh, folder as well. Then we can just launch Aurora by going into the Aurora folder, going down to aurora.xex and pressing A to launch it and now we are in Aurora. It should Now it will take a little while to start up initially um, I don't really have anything on my on my console, so it didn't take very long, but it can take a little bit, a little while if you have a lot of files on there. So this is the dashboard. It doesn't look particularly amazing right now because we don't really have anything on here yet. There's no games. We don't have any games installed. But if you press um, the start button, it will take you to the settings. Now there's a few things we should do in here to basically fully set this up. So. So we have Unity Connection, this is quite important. Um, you want to create an Xbox Unity account. So to do that, you want to head into, um, you want to head onto your computer, head to um, xboxunity.net, I believe it is. Yep, xboxunity.net, and you want to register. So create an account on here. So enter your name, your username, your email, your password, and confirm password. So what you want to do is you just want to enter some information in here. So name, username, email, password. And you want to just go ahead and send. And that should work. So it says added users. Oh, really? Hold on. I get, yeah, okay. So you do need to activate it. Never mind. I thought you didn't have to activate it. Looks like you do. So go to your email and click the link to activate. And I think that's me logged in right now. Okay, there we go. So I'm logged in. So once you have created the account and you've confirmed that it's working and that you can log into it, you want to head back onto your console. So now you've created an Xbox Unity account. Now what you need to go ahead and do is make sure that you connect your Xbox to uh, your network, to your local area network, so that you are connected to 
um, to your network, so to the internet basically. Now, it, make sure you followed episode 2, uh, which was installing Dash Launch, because if you've installed Dash Launch, you should have Live Block enabled. So just to show you what happens when you have Live Block enabled. So if you were to connect to Xbox Live without Live Block enabled, you would get instantly console banned because Microsoft can detect instantly when a modded console is connecting to Xbox Live. However, um, there, like I say, there's there's ways of getting around that that I'll show you. But even because I have Live Block enabled inside uh, Dash Launch, like I showed you guys in Episode Two, so if you haven't watched Episode Two, make sure you watch it. But because I have Live Block enabled, I'm going to get a DNS error. So if I go to Show Suggestions, it says there's a DNS error. So it blocks Microsoft's DNS, so I cannot at all connect to Xbox Live. So I'm not going to get banned. And by the way, if your console's already console banned, then this doesn't really matter. Um, so anyway, test PC connection is what you want to do. And that will make sure that you're connected to your local area network. So there we go. You can see that that worked. And if I configure network, I've got a valid IP address. So once you've done that, that means you're now connected to the internet. You're not connected to Xbox Live, but you are connected to the internet, which allows you to access um, Aurora, which allows you to access uh, online features inside Aurora. So we can go ahead and start Aurora back up. And once it starts, you can press back to confirm you have a valid IP address. Press start, head to Unity, and now we can add our Unity information in here. So I'm going to add that uh, user account I just made. So I'll add the user account, press request key, and that will ask you for your password. And then if you entered your username and password correctly, this key should appear down here, and that means that that has worked. Okay, so that is basically all you have to do right now inside Aurora. Um, now what we want to do is we want to make Aurora boot first. So we want Aurora to be the default dashboard for the, um, for the system. So what that means is we want to make sure that when we switch the console on, it will take us straight into Aurora instead of having to take us to the normal dashboard because that's kind of annoying. If it goes to the normal dashboard, we then have to launch XCX menu, then we have to go into the Aurora folder, and then we have to launch Aurora just to get to this dashboard. We can skip all of that and make it automatically launch straight into this dashboard. And you may think, I don't, sh not sure if I really like this dashboard. I kind of like the normal dashboard. Trust me, this dashboard is so much, so much better once we have games and stuff installed, and it will make sense why you want this dashboard to to be your primary dashboard. So let's go ahead and do that. So what you want to do is you want to head to XEX menu. In fact, we can actually do some of this stuff just now. So if I head to, uh, we can actually add XEX menu in this dashboard so we can launch it from this dashboard. So we want to go into settings. You want to go into content. And what you want to do is just go to manage paths and add a path. You want to change the location. Uh, to HDD1, which is where we have our homebrew stuff installed. And you want to just basically select this directory and then leave the scan depth, put it on or put it on two or three. Go, go for applications or homebrew and then save. And then what you'll see happening is we are downloading two covers Boom, there we go. So we have Aurora, we have Zell Launch. Where I don't know why it's Zell Launch, it should be XCX Menu. Um, and you've got Dash Launch. So the good thing about this is because we've connected it to the internet, it's actually downloaded these covers from XboxUnity.net. So it's downloaded them from the internet, which is pretty cool. So that is why you want to connect to the internet. If you didn't connect to the internet, then they'll just be missing covers. But because we connected to the internet, we've got the covers for them. So if I want to get into Dash Launch, I don't have to go through XEX menu anymore. I can just press A on that and boom, we're in Dash Launch. So you can see how good that is. Now in Dash Launch, what we want to do 
is we want to um, basically change the default path. So we go into paths, we go to default. You want to set Aurora as the default path. So we go to Aurora, we select Aurora.xcx, and then we press right bumper, and we press X to save. Another cool thing to do, one thing I like to do, is change X to launch XCX menu. This is pretty much optional for you, but I like to do it. So I'm going to go into content, the folder with all the zeros, code 9999, this folder here, and then you have XCX menu 1.2. I'm going to select that as X. So now I'll press right bumper, press X to save. And now if I press B, it's not going to take me back to the default dashboard. It's going to take me to Aurora because Aurora is my default dashboard. If I want to go to XCX menu, I can basically press start. I can press uh, Y to go to Xbox Home. And then as soon as I press A to say yes to go to Xbox Home, I'm going to hold down the X button. So I'm going to press yes and then hold down X. And because I'm holding down X, it's going to launch me into XCX menu because we set that as the path for holding down the X button. So this, this gives you like quick access to launch um, different applications. And of course, if I just uh, go back to the dashboard and I don't press anything, it's going to take me back to Aurora. So you might be wondering, okay, if it just defaultly takes me back to Aurora, how do I get to the normal dashboard again? I might need to go back to the normal dashboard for whatever reason. Well, in order, there's a, a default button uh, combination to take you back to the, the normal dashboard and that is just right bumper. So you just want to hold down the right bumper when you're going back to dash. So if I press start, if I go um, Y, Xbox Home, and as soon as I press A to say yes to go to Xbox Home, I'm going to hold down the right bumper button. So yes, hold down right bumper, and boom, we're back on the normal dashboard. So that's how that works. So it's hold down right bumper to go to normal dash, if you just don't hold down any button, it will take you to Aurora. And if you hold down the X button, it will take you to XCX menu. And you can, of course, you can customize all of this in Dash Launch to your liking. That's just, this is just my personal preference. So yeah, that is basically that. It should take me back to Aurora. There we go. Um, no titles found. Uh, did we not save? That's unusual. Oh, I don't think we actually saved. That's um, that's my bad right there. Sorry. Um, need to press the button to actually save it, so that that is permanent. Yeah, there we go. So. Now we have all of this stuff saved, and when we add games, they'll, we can also add games into Aurora, so your games will show up in here as well. So you'll have all your homebrew applications and your games. So yeah, that is basically how you install Aurora fully so that it's properly set up, and now you can easily launch Dash Launch, XX Menu, Aurora. You can easily, it'll automatically boot into Aurora when you first switch the console on now. So very, very useful. In the next episode, we're going to look at actually installing games themselves so that you can, um, you know, install, get free games, basically, and um, install the latest title updates on them. And then in the episode following that, we'll, we'll look at installing DLC, and then we'll probably move on to actually getting your console online and modding games uh, as well. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions, and I will see you guys in the next one.